Hey there, this is Daniel West. Welcome to the Pear Blossom Press channel. Today we're going to make a Copic colored card that shines in three different ways. One of those is glitter. The other we're going to use some lacquer and we're also going to use Pear Blossom Press Easy Light. So we're going to have a lot of merriment going on here with this Colorado Craft Company stamp featuring some mice having a wonderful New Year's Eve time. Mixing up some cocktails and having dessert. It's just going to be great. <laughs> so I'm going to start my card by inking up an express panel of cardstock. This is Copic friendly card and using some Hero Arts ink here. This is the intensified black ink, perfect for Copic colors. I didn't want a super soaked black image. I wanted it kind of faint because I want to restamp later and not smudge black ink everywhere. So on this cardstock, it's best to try to get a rather faint image first and then color and then restamp. So you'll see that at the end. I'm going to use a palette of red violets alias pink and yellow and orange and a little bit of green here yellow green it goes well with this pink for the for the background and for the carpet so you can see i'm just using a mixture of my copics here this is yg95 for the olives the yg90 family is going to come in again later i use the rv0 family for the uh, uh, pink I've already laid down. And you can see I'm doing a splotchy coloring here. This is storybook style coloring, not super blendy. And this is my signature Copic coloring style for, especially for Anita Jerem goodies. I love this New Year's Eve um, stamp set. This New Year's stamp set is Anita Jerem AJ407 from Colorado Craft Company. And here I'm going to use my toner grays, splotchily coloring in my little rats or mice. Are they mice or are they rats? You tell me. Hmm. I love the style of coloring because it doesn't have to be precise. I mean, you do kind of want to stay in the lines, but other than that, you know, you just add the texture where you like and it's not perfect and it's like me, you know, splotchy and imperfect. Are you like that? You see how I laid down just some kind of uh, details there with just a bit of lines, splotchy lines, and then uh, blended them out a bit? That's a, a great way to add fur or texture to fur. For these little utensils, the, the muddler and the jigger and all of the little cocktail tools, um, I just used toner two or toner five and toner two. <clears throat> and now I'm going to add in some, those mistletoe up there at the top. You know, those are left over from Christmas. I'm going to color in the drink, um, cocktail glasses and drink glasses with some gray as well. And just add some more details with my RV09. Now this drink is going to be kind of yellow and orange. And then the olives in there. Let's get some on his face. I just had a good time coloring this in. It was super fun, super easy. And uh, now I just add some shadows here and there. That's toner five. But I decided I wanted to darken some things up because it looked a little flat to me. So I wanted some pops of different things in different areas. I got the YG97 out or 99. And then I blended some of those back in. I'm going to darken up the olives as well. In a minute, added some of that YG97 to my, um, or 95 there to my carpet. And now for the little berries, I'm adding RV99. Wow, that was really dark, but I liked it. And for the background, I decided I wanted to just add some tile in there. And I'm just adding one corner of the tile. I'm not drawing literally tiles. I'm just kind of giving the impression of tiles. 
in the background, kind of the subway tiles in the background. And I'm only going to do two lines of it, so it kind of looks like they're on the edge of some place. And I just really wanted the third, that third to be filled in, you know, a little bit. Here I added some depth to my olives and then blended it out with a bit of yellow. And I'm going to add some depth to my candy. I just think it added a bit of pop to my whole work of art here by adding in some darker bits of, of RV99 and then RV9. Filling in my gift box a little bit better. Let's pop it back in the Misty. Grab some black onyx ink from Vers Versafine and then just darken up that image. I wanted to get any excess off of there so I laid a piece of scrap paper over it and ran it over it and then took my heat tool out and heated it up. And now I've got a nice dry image to work with and it won't smudge. That's what I wanted, right? There's nothing like, nothing worse than doing all this work and then smudging your your project. Ugh, it's awful. So do that, and then I'm going to take a piece of cardstock, kind of darken up or thicken up my panel because the Express It card is kind of thin, right? I'm going to dark or thicken it up by adding a panel to the back of this, and then we'll poke holes in it. So I've got a little tape runner. You don't want to use liquid adhesive there because you don't want it to seep through that thin Express It card. And then just pop that on the piece of the scrap paper I had there. Now I'm going to use a little rubber mat to kind of help me poke holes through this. I use the rubber mat this time instead of my fingers because, number one, I don't want to poke a hole in my finger. Number two, it helps keep the cardstock from bending. So I'm going to poke those holes kind of back through the back and then widen them up just a little bit so that my easy lights can shine through more easily, right? So just get some score tape, tape the wires down as always. This is the uh, fun part of adding light to get the, you get to become, you don't have to be an electrician, but you do get to play with wires, which is fun. Then decide where to put those guys. Here I've done two different ways of laying down tape. The first two, I put the tape off the light and on this one, I'm going to put the tape right on top of the light just to see how it worked out. You know, but it worked out perfectly fine and see how they shine. So I've got shine, a shine kind of hitting the olive and then shine hitting the cocktail glasses. I kind of got off camera there for a second, but I grabbed my little stamp set for instructions, you know, the action stamp set from Pear Blossom Press and stamped press where I want to put the button for my uh, little housing there. And I'm going to use some of the world's best foam tape here. Great foam tape because it doesn't stick immediately. I mean, it stay, it'll stay there if you don't pull it up, but uh, if you... Leave it for a good long time, it'll become permanent. But it's not permanent right away, which is great, because I make lots of mistakes. I just edit them out of the video, so you don't get to see all of them. You can see some of them. <laughs> so just see how easily it cuts, just like butter. It doesn't tear if you just use your fingers. So use some scissors, and then make sure you get it right up to the edge there. You don't want light leaking out the back of your project and then now we can take our little uh, electronic housing and put that on the back there with some more score tape i was going to put a wedge there like i did on my last project but it didn't need it it seems like my tape was close enough but and also i didn't want to um put that where my actual button was going to be so we're just going to Take that away and forget about it. Forget about it. I'm going to forget about it. Now, we're going to grab that score tape and put that on the back here. After we figure out where we want this, this uh, button, right? It was just a little bit too high at this place. So, I'm just 
pop that right back up off that score tape, move it down a hair, and start again. Let's see if that's where we want it. And looks that was good. I'm going to peel the backing off of my foam tape just about halfway through on each side. This gives me wiggle room. If I don't want to, or if I see that I didn't put it down exactly where I want it the first time, then I can um, peel it up more easily. So I'm just going to lay this down right on top of my card base and foam tape, smush it down, and then peel those out the rest of the way. And we're almost finished, guys. We've got a card base and the front already. Now we need a sentiment and we need to add the other shine. So for the cocktail glass here that has some kind of salt or sugar rim, I'm just going to use some glue and sprinkle some Prisma glitter on the front of that from Simon Says Stamp. And then I'm going to take a Hero Arts lacquer pen. If you don't have the lacquer pen, you could just as easily use glossy accents for this. I just grabbed the lacquer pen. It's To me, it's the same thing. I mean, they end up feeling very, very similar. And they both dry clear. So they're just in different tubes, really. I don't even know if they're the same or not. But they get the job done, you know. So I'm going to go all the way down the stem of my glasses, all over the, the goblet parts of each one. I'm going to give some shine to the eyes of my little rats. And also to the little ends of my umbrella. Those little dots are all going to get a little shine. So I've got three shine areas here. We've got the glasses are shiny with their eyes with that lacquer pen. Now that it's dry, you can see how beautifully clear they dry back. And then I've got some salt, a salt rim for the cocktail there. And I have the electronic shine by just pressing this button. Easy Lights makes it easy. Isn't that fun? Here's my sentiment. Grabbed it right out of my stamp set. Put it on a acrylic block from Catherine Pooler. Dipped it into my Vera... Versifying ink and pressed it in and that was it. it all of the things I've used are in the description box below for your convenience just hit the link that says um, supplies list and also if you haven't subscribed to the Pear Blossom Press channel what are you waiting for an invitation well here it is I invite you to hit the thumbs up and subscribe Thank you for joining me today and you have a wonderful day.